Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail and I have three clips for you tonight. The first one is with Judge Mark Bronlich at the 38th Circuit Court in Michigan. He has a parent who wants to have his ex tested for Munchausen. And I have some comments about that, but I'm, I'm going to wait till the end because I don't want to give anything away. The second clip is with Judge Devin Collier at the 14th Circuit Court in Florida. And he has a defendant who is taking a plea. She's pleading guilty, but then says, it wasn't mine. And then she has some other complaints. I don't want to give those away either, so I'll comment about that at the end. And then the last one is with Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez. You know, I always have to throw one of hers in, and it's just a short clip, but I think you guys will like it. So here you go. Court is now in session. Metal page one, Hazel Merritt versus Martin O'Neill. For the record, this marriage before the court for purpose of reviewing parenting time, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, President is attorney Alex Goldman representing the plaintiff mother, Hazel Merritt. Uh, Ms. Merritt uh, appears to be present, but she's muted herself. Um, is Martin O'Neill present on audio? Yeah. All right. Good morning, Mr. O'Neill. Good morning. And Mr. O'Neill, I'm informed that you uh, would not behave rationally when you conferred with the front of the court. You, you shoot yourself no. in the foot when, when you yell and scream and you talk over people, Mr. Mr. Merida, or Mr. O'Neill, we've discussed that in the past. You've got to control your behavior. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Are, are we, are we going to behave in, in, with this hearing this morning or if you're going to start yelling at the court, then we're done. No, I'm I'm act like I have some sense. I'm just I'm just suggesting to you when you meet with the front of the court or any court representatives, if you behave yourself, you're gonna get you're gonna get much farther. The people will listen hey. to you. But when you start yelling, I, people will shut you right down, Mr. O'Neill. I'm just telling you that. So in the event, the parties have conferred with Mr. Walker this morning. Uh, Mr. Walker has provided the court the fine recommendation. Recommendation is the expert the order of November 29th be reinstated until further order of the court. Uh, for the record, the expert the order suspended uh, defendant files printing time. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, what's going on, Mr. O'Neill? Um, well, I guess Alasia had two appointments, right? She had two appointments and, and, um, when she gave me the appointments, I already had a, huh? What has changed since we're last in court on February 6th? What's happened in the last 30 days? Really hey, really nothing changed. Elijah is doing good in school. She's going to school every day. She's reading. She's learning her spelling words. And she's, uh, she's going to bed on time. And she's doing everything right. And I guess I got this exportation is because i i forgot two doctors appointment but which she's which she gave them to me like uh, like one or two days unnoticed so you know like i couldn't keep up with that because i had to get her in school she had to be in school she hasn't been sick she hasn't like nothing has not been wrong with her long as that i have her so like so i just don't understand why is they trying to put this export back on me and, and i haven't did anything wrong how mom is going to schedule appointments on on my week or or the time that i have her i don't understand that and then the phone call situation i let i've been trying to get a lady to call her mom she said she's not ready to call her mom. Miss uh, Hazel called the police out here and told and told the police that I was withholding her phone and this and another. The police talked to Elasia, and Elasia had told the police that she wasn't ready to call her mom. She brought her this phone, and Elasia don't even touch this phone. This phone lay right next by her. 
So I, I like, and I just don't understand how y'all trying to put this ex parte back on me because I missed two appointments, which she gave them to me like uh, one or two days before, I guess. I man, I don't know. I it's just okay. So uh, it's just so, too okay, Mr. O'Neill. I, I got cases every 15 minutes, so I'm trying to get to, I've got to be succinct here. So you, you, the only change has been you missed the two medical appointments for your daughter. Is that correct? Since we we're last in court, yes, sir. Okay, who the who's the appointments? Who, who are they with? Who scheduled them? It was that it was a dentist appointment and then a uh a pulmonary whatever that i don't even know what that is okay why did uh, did you why did you miss a dental appointment one um i didn't have a ride for her because my girlfriend had to work and then and then i didn't have insurance to go all the way out there from our car so we didn't we didn't we didn't go okay did you reschedule it? It was a little, uh huh did you reschedule the dental appointment? I was I was trying to I was trying to reschedule it, but um, when I was trying to find her another doctor's appointment, I had called her doctor, and her doctor had told me that that they had dismissed Miss Mary and her kids from the uh, doctor's office for right. missing Neal, appointment. Mr. Neal, the question is. Did you reschedule the dentist appointment? If you you said you didn't have transportation, uh, first of all, who scheduled the appointment? Did you or did Hazel schedule that appointment? Hazel, I don't. I guess Hazel scheduled it. Okay, and did you re, did you, when you uh, didn't have transportation? Did you reschedule the appointment? It's a simple question. Either yes or no. No. Why? Be because I just got insurance on my car. You have insurance. Hold on. Now you have insurance. Why didn't you reschedule? Because I, one, I'm so confused about this doctor telling me about Alasia doesn't have a doctor anymore. So I was trying to no, face her to get a doctor. Mr. O'Neill, Mr. O'Neill, let's talk about the dentist. You missed a dental appointment, you didn't have insurance, you never ride. Once you got insurance, did you reschedule the dentist appointment? Let's not talk about doctors, let's talk about the dentist. Did you reschedule the dentist appointment? Yes, I rescheduled okay. it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to. Camera participants. Okay, you're going to. No, it's not, dude. Mr. O'Neill, you got to do that yesterday. You got to do that immediately. You reschedule that. Okay, okay, but listen, how can I do anything when when it's like I have to, I got all type of stuff to do with Elijah. She's doing counseling. She had her IEP. She have a meeting on the 7th that, that I had to go to. Well, not on the 7th. On the 7th of this one that I had to go to. I had to go to another meeting. Like, so, like, I'm trying to set all this stuff up, but I'm in the weeds because I because she really need a doctor. And when I called the doctor... They said that they dismissed them from the doctor. So, like, how do I know that she got any other doctor? Because Miss Merritt is not telling me this. She's not right. telling me anything about her doctors. Well, you schedule an appointment with it. Well, first of all, reschedule a dentist appointment, Mr. O'Neill. If you can't handle these yes, things, then, then obviously the child should be with mom if you can't handle these things. If you want to be I, the, the uh, have re a regular party time, uh, you need to take care of these things. All right, so we hear from uh, Mr. Goldman. Mr. Goldman, what's been the change circumstances the last thirty days that we that we just uh, uh, we just flip flop things with this poor child going back and forth, back and forth? I agree, Your Honor, and I think that the flip flop schedule was a drastic flip. That my understanding was based off of a phone call that front of the court has had with the school principal. That's why I've included the attendance records to show that all the alleged. Uh, absences under mother's care are excused or a vast majority of them. So I think that the current parenting time schedule is punitive uh, for no reason. I think that Miss Merritt 
has always provided for the child's medical appointment needs, gets her to school when she's able to go to school. So we're requesting that based on that, uh, that we return to an equal parenting time schedule. Um, I do want to add, you know, the, the whole my whole involvement is based on the ex parte, and we've been waiting for the CPS report. I just received that at 445 yesterday, and I would just like more time to review it and also provide a copy to the court. My understanding is that the court has not received a copy either. Right. Um, obviously, when mom schedules medical dentist appointments, she's got to schedule on her time. Well, she she did, Your Honor. She scheduled it on her time, and then the parent then all her parenting time was removed at the last hearing. When right. she dropped the child off on February 11th, she included a handwritten note that there was an appointment on February 13th. Father then took it upon himself to just not take the child to that appointment and not reschedule it. All right. All right. So uh, the, the the court uh, the, the two of you need to start communicating for the best interest of your child. You're making life difficult for each other. You're making it difficult for your daughter and each other. Do you hear that, me, Mr. O'Neill and Ms. Merritt? You're making life difficult for each other and the child. Can I say something right quick, Your Honor? No, please. No, Mr. O'Neill. What the uh, claims that we, we back in October 2023, the two of you agreed upon joint legal, joint physical, week on, week off parenting time. The court's going to reinstate that. So the uh, week on, week off, the child will continue to attend the Monroe Public Schools, Arborwood. I mean, uh, and there should not be really excuse absence, Mr. Goldman. I'm not going to get into and spend a bunch of time in terms of why there were a lot of absences. Maybe they're excused, but she, the child needs to be going to school. Schedule the, the doctor appointments COVID, maybe Honor? after the, 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 the school day or something. Your Honor, what you if know? the child has COVID? Okay, well, is that what, is that, do we have documentation <laughs> on COVID? But we're not, we're going to go there. The court's going to reinstate what the parties agreed to back in October, not even six months ago, 2023. So the court's going to, Go back to where we where we started some time ago, Mr. O'Neill, Ms. Merritt. Week on, week off parenting time. Uh, the exchanges at the Dundee Police Department. And I don't recall when we exchanged. Was it Sunday at 6 o'clock? I think that's correct. I think it's Sunday to Sunday at 6 at Dundee All right. Police Department. All right. So we're going to exchange on um, this Sunday at 6. Mr. O'Neill, you can uh, bring uh, your daughter out to Dundee Police Department. The child will go with mom for a week. And mom, you've got to understand you now live in Lenaway County, but you've got to make sure the child gets to the Arborwood School. And can you do that? Ms. Merritt? You need to unmute yourself. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. I do make sure she gets to school when she's not sick and is able to attend the school. Okay. Well, if she's sick, you need to take her to the doctor that day. What is that? Oh, I do. Your Honor, so the, the exhibit I provided yesterday. I think yesterday she got much by by Crosby. Mr. O'Neill, stop. Okay. Stop, Mr. O'Neill. Miss Merritt, if she says, I just don't feel good, get to the doctor's office. You're not going to take her to school and you she needs to go to the doctor's office. I do. Your Honor, okay. I did attach, I gave that exhibit to your chambers yesterday. It's got yes. a lot of documents in the back. It's it's very small print. I, I don't know if my, my glasses can pick up all these prints. I see just a lot of dots. And the, I see the, the last word, four yes. pages are doctor's notes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the, again, the court's going to reinstate week on, week off parenting time as the parties agreed back in October 2023. And the, the exchange will occur at the Dundee Police Department at 6 o'clock on Sundays. Can it start today? Right. It started no. today. Mr. O'Neill, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, is there any type of way that we can get mom check for munch housing by proxy? Because uh, uh, that's what it's saying. Like. How, how, how does the court check that? Obviously, if you feel that she's abusing this child by having unnecessary uh exams yes obviously it's a concern this child can't be examined especially if it's a sexual alleged sexual assault exam we can't be putting a child through that unnecessarily yeah. but uh yeah. that's, you need to talk to an attorney about that and you need to maybe file a motion for a psychological evaluation mr o'neill but at this point in time uh let's just try this weekend week off uh mr walker do you think we need a review date in a couple months or mr goldman any thoughts about a review dates uh, your honor it seems I, I like just, these I parties are having a difficult time communicating together 
I, I understand, Your Honor. I, I just think that the importance of the underlying allegations involved in the ex parte haven't been fully explored because we've been waiting for the CPS report. I got that last night. If I'd gotten it okay. three days ago, we could have addressed it today. But I, I just think that the court deserves to have time to review that. Your okay. Honor, I have all 17 pages. All yeah, 27 pages. On the Sorry. Front of the courts, uh, it's okay. On the front of the court side, Your Honor, we did receive a not the full report, but a um, a, a smaller report uh, that states that there was no preponderance. I know Mr. Goldman says that there are things in the larger report that may have significance, um, but the report the front of the court did receive did did state that there's no preponderance. And they closed the case. Okay. Well, we can, uh, Mr. Goldman, would you, are you requesting what a review date? 30 days, 45 days? 30 days, Your Honor. All right. All right. We can set a review date. Um, and while and we do Mr. that, Mr. O'Neill, it's very important you have to protect your daughter. If there's some allegations that there's a stepchild or your girlfriend's child that's, um, you know, inappropriately doing things inappropriate to the daughter, you need to make sure that you are present. Your daughter is protected from, from everyone in this world. So we'll set this for review then in about, uh, let's see, uh, end of April. Yeah. How about uh, April 23rd? April 23rd at 2 o'clock, you available, Mr. Goldman? Yes, Your Honor. April okay, 23rd at 2? Time? Yeah, 2 o'clock. Mr. Uh, Walker, we could add the court review uh, parenting time, April 23rd, 2 p.m. Again, the court will say week on, week off parenting time. Uh, that will begin on uh, this Sunday, 6 o'clock, as far as we have Dundee Police Department. Sunday to Sunday, and that will begin, of course, this Sunday, which is uh, March 10th. And this morning, Mr. Goldman. Sorry, Your Honor. Do you have anything further this morning? No, Your Honor. All right, uh, Mr. O'Neill, anything further? Yes, I have just one more question. Where did you say I have to go for to for that much housing by proxy? You said maybe, maybe an attorney can suggest to you probably need to file a motion. And, uh, and lay out all the evidence that you that you think would support a psychological evaluation. They need you to determine who's going to pay for the psychological evaluation of uh, Miss uh, Merritt. It's it's okay. complicated, Mr. O'Neill. It's not as simple as the court just ordered it. Somebody's got to pay for it. It's very expensive. Oh, I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. You need to get together documentation of all the alleged medical appointments that do you claim that mom made for your daughter and that they were without uh, merit. You know, get, get and about her being sick too, right? And about her being sick too, right? Get 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 proof of documentation. Okay. That the doctors are saying there was an unnecessary appointment or not as necessary. And obviously, you want to uh, exercise caution. If in fact there's an issue, you want to have a doctor at least uh, look at the child, evaluate the child, Mr. O'Neill. But if in fact the child's going through a uh, a uh, sane exam or a sexual assault exam, that's a little, that's invasive and that's a little bit different. I don't know whether that's occurred, but you need to get to the documentation proof. I'm sorry, Mr. Goldman, you had something else? A very small thing, Your Honor. To reschedule the dentist appointment is going to be $35. I'm assuming that Ms. Merritt's going to be responsible for that, and we're just asking that she be reimbursed for that. No, because it's going to be on her time. She can't schedule nothing on my time. But she has to incur a $35 fee. So, Mr. O'Neill, the court's going to order that you reimburse Ms. Merritt thirty-five dollars for that that missed appointment. You you were aware of it, and you just didn't have the transportation. So, it's thirty-five dollars, not a big expense. Uh, the child was with you at that time. The court gave you uh, possession of that child. So, the, the court's going to order you pay her thirty-five dollars. Okay, and that yes, uh, will do this matter. We'll see everyone back here then on April twenty-third at two p.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Much house by hey, proxy. Zoom out, Mr. Goldman, uh, Mr. O'Neill. Christy Cook. Uh, this is uh, Christy Cook in case 2130 CF. She's going to withdraw her previous inner plea of. Not guilty. And you can leave her a copy of the inner. Yeah. Sorry. Inner plea of guilty to, um, I guess it's count three possession of controlled substance 
um, third degree felony punishment up to five years in prison, $5,000 fine or both, and count four possession of uh, mayoral, possession of paraphernalia, misdemeanor punishment right, uh, county uh, jail time. The agreement we've reached with the state should be adjudicated guilty as to each, as to the misdemeanor, she should be sentenced to time served. On the felony count, she should be placed on a period of probation not to exceed three years. She do a substance abuse evaluation and follow all recommended uh, treatment, random urinase, UA, UAs at her own expense. Uh, she'll be transferring her uh, uh, supervision to the state of, of Georgia. So she'd execute a waiver of extradition to effectuate that. All remaining counts uh, would be consolidated for purposes of the plea. Uh, court costs, uh, fine and community service work would be imposed at the court's discretion. We waive a reading of any discretionary costs we would uh, acknowledge uh, the state could prove a prima facie case based on the facts contained in the amended uh, charges. And we're unaware of any DNA if tested would assist the defense. Thank you, Ms. Cook. You raise your right hand for me. Yes, sir. And would you tell me your name, your age, and your highest level of education? Christy Cook, 40 and uh, Did you hear Mr. Hills, excuse me, Mr. Meredith's announcement about how you're going to resolve your case this afternoon? Yes, sir. Anyone promise you anything other than what was stated here in open court? No, sir. Anyone threaten to coerce you in any way to get you in on this plea? Yes, sir. Have you had a special amount of time to speak with Mr. Hill or Mr. Meredith? No. Mm -hmm. I need to know. Um, yeah. Do you need additional time to speak with your attorney, ma'am? And are you satisfied with the services of your attorney? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medication this afternoon? Yes, sir. Have you been prescribed any medication you did not take? Yes, sir. You're clear minded? You believe this plea is in your best interest? Yes, sir. You understand that you're waiving your right to a, a jury trial and waiving your right to appeal anything other than an illegal sentence? Yes, sir. You understand you're not a U.S. citizen by entering this plea because <laughs> subject you to deportation? Now we're going to find your plea is known, intelligent, and voluntarily entered into. There's a factual basis based on the stipulation on counts um, three and four of the information. You will be adjudicated guilty. As to count four, possession of paraphernalia, you'll be sentenced to time served. On count three, possession of a controlled substance, maybe you'll be sentenced to three years of probation. Um, you must undergo a substance abuse evaluation and follow up with any recommended treatment. You have random UAs at your own expense. Uh, you, your supervision may transfer to the state of Georgia upon satisfaction uh, of the statutory requirements. And I believe there's a payment requirement. Madam probation officer, correct? Um, I believe it's about $100 or not. <clears throat> you need to pay that fee before it can transfer. You also, you need to sign a waiver of extradition. And the remaining accounts of the information, accounts one and two, will be consolidated into count three. You have court costs and fines in the amount of $1,005. You also must perform 100 hours of community service work. And your cost of supervision is $20 per month. Is there anything else, counsel? You know, same thing about community service in that. Well, I order community service. Is there a reason why you can't perform community service? I mean, well, I work. <laughs> Everybody that comes before me usually works that's on probation. You think you're somebody, I should make an exception? Do you not want to accept the plea? I'm going to send the plea. Mr. Meredith? Yeah, prior uh, to coming to court, I did review Mr. Hill's notes uh, in our program stack. Um, Discuss things with her. So I, without the trafficking charge, his opinion and mine without knowing any more. Is it this, uh, even if it's best interest plea, it should be accepted. Do you have any questions or any issues now? No. Looks like something's going on. Um, right now is the time to talk about it? or Yeah, something is because it was not mine. Even the arresting officers that night told me that they believed that it was not mine, but that unless the guy admitted it was his, I was the one going to jail. Not to mention, they falsely accused me of rolling a stop sign to pull me over in a tag light that was, you know, you had just talked to me about my tag prior to this and let me go. And then you stopped me again because you go and you sit down the road and wait for me to pull off from somewhere. You know, I mean, it's crazy that I have to be a convicted felon over something that wasn't even mine. Well, the, the charge is possession, not ownership. So you don't have to own it. You just have to be in possession. And possession can be constructive possession so long as they can, they can prove that you 
knew about it and had the ability to exercise dominion and control, um, that, that's sufficient. And as far as any defenses you may have, including uh, Fourth Amendment uh, search and seizure by entering this, but you're, you're waiving those defenses. You understand that? Yes. Is this what you want to do? You think it's in your best interest? It looks like the state's consolidating count one, which was a mm -hmm. uh, trafficking charge. And trafficking an MDMA, you're mm -hmm. looking at a maximum of 30 years in prison. And my fingerprints weren't even on it, but it's okay. I mean, that's something you can raise to a, to a jury, but they may agree or disagree with you. And if you're convicted, well, at that point, we won't be talking about your three years probation. We'll be talking about something a lot more. Mm -hmm. Is this what you want to do? Mm -hmm. I'm not twisting your arm or coercing you into doing anything. I want to make sure this is what you want to do yeah, now. Yeah, I ain't trying to go to prison for no time. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to accept your um, plea. You got 30 days from today to appeal to judgment and sentence or record. And if you can't afford an attorney, Ms. Cook, one will be provided for you. Best of luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, I need you in front of the V card, Chiarda Johnson. So well, you said she was here February 13th? Yes. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Okay, Ms. Johnson. You were given very specific directions by this court on February 13th that when you return today, you would have retained counsel. Where's your attorney? Um, financially, I'm trying to work on it. I didn't have enough time to go downstairs. I had to work last time. So I didn't have enough time to wait and go downstairs to get a, uh, a court appointed. No, 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 no. You said you wanted to hire an attorney. Are you now saying yes. you want to qualify? You want to get interviewed to see if you qualify for court appointed counsel? Excuse me, Judge. I accidentally muted the cart. I went to go unmute myself. I apologize. Ramos, can you unmute the V cart? And Judge, if I may, on February 13th, she requested to apply for a court appointed yes. attorney. I met with her and gave her a form. I advised her to go directly to pretrial services in order to be interviewed for that court appointed attorney. You can stop right there because she did she did not follow your directives. Yes. And, and so I advised her that if for some reason she did not qualify for appointment, then she had until today to hire her own attorney. Here's the deal. She didn't even fi go figure out if she could qualify because she left. She didn't follow your directives. And I announce at the beginning of every docket, Ms. Johnson, that the directives you get from my staff are my directives. So you just violated a court order by leaving early that day. Now tell me I, why I shouldn't tell me why I shouldn't take you into custody. I didn't have I didn't have time to go. I had to go to work. I don't I care that you didn't have time to go or that you had to go to work. You are a defendant in this court and your court order to stay here until you're released or, or follow our instructions. This is not a playground you come to play on. Your liberty is at risk. Do you understand that? Yes. Evidently not. You're going to get reset to Monday. You're not excused today, ma'am. I'm ordering you right now to get over and go see if you qualify for court appointed counsel. Yes, ma'am. Follow those directions that were given to you back in February. Today. And if I find out that you didn't, you better get, bring a toothbrush the next time you come because you're staying for a while. Yes, ma'am. Go qualify. See if you qualify. And if you don't, I'm going to reset you the next week. I'm going to reset you the next week. Sybil, she's uh, ordered to return on March 11th. And on that day, ma'am, that means you should have reset to March 11th. Either your court appointed counsel shows up if you qualify today or you better come in with retained counsel or we're going to go forward with you being pro se. You've had sufficient time, ma'am. And it's because you've been playing around between my coordinator and me, playing with whether you're going to follow court orders or not. You don't get an option. This is not a choice for you. I Have I made myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Do you know where to go from here now? I'm assuming downstairs, down to like the basement. And is that true? Down to the basement, go left, left, left. Ma'am, do you still have your form with you? Because they're not going to process you without that form. Did you bring it? 
Um, I did not. I still have it. It's at my house, but I did not bring it with me. Judge, I'm going to have to prepare another form for her and meet with her. Have a seat, ma'am. You're not excused. Do not leave the courtroom. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Espinoza, this is a court of law. It's not a laughing matter, sir. Now I get to put in my two cents. Uh, the first video, even though the father sounds like a little nutty, I do believe his daughter is his pride and joy and he loves her very much. And the one thing that perked my ears up that made me think, huh, was when the judge asked the mother, are you going to make sure she goes to school every day? Are you going to get her to school? And she said, as long as she's not sick. Well, that, that just sounded weird to me because why would you say that? I mean, everybody knows that kids get the flu and, and they have to be kept out of school at those times. But I, you know, and I don't know how many days she was kept out of school when she was with mom, but I think that's why she was given to dad for a while. So that just sounds a little odd to me that, that that's what you're already thinking about, that I won't take her to school if she's sick. She's, she's focusing on her sickness, which I thought was a little weird. On the second video where the woman was taking a plea, I just thought it was funny where she was like, it wasn't mine. They can't prove it was mine. And they had no reason to pull me over in the first place. And I think she just doesn't want to go through, I think it was three years of probation where she's going to have to do UAs and not be high and not be smoking weed and you know doing stuff like that i think that's the issue that's just my thought and the third one i just thought was funny i will log in on april 23rd and look to see if she has an attorney though i think she's gonna have to by then <laughs> but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and for being here for the premiere. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.